Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about something that's a little more conceptual but I think it's actually a really important part of uh, transformation and change programs and I don't think it gets talked about enough and that is this idea of cultural inertia or um, the overriding systemic pressures that we have in our organization and how that can impact your ability to make change. So let's just imagine for a moment that you have a large transformation aspiration <laughs> you've got a vision, um, you're in the middle of going through this work of transforming your organization. And for the sake of argument, let's say that you've started that work and uh, maybe your first piece, your first project within that, that broader vision is, um, is around some technology replacement. Now, this stuff happens all over the place, but usually there's a tech replacement um, component to this. Um, it's, it's a really easy, easy example. So Let's say, you've, for the sake of argument, you've got this piece of technology that needs to be replaced or built, um, and you go through that process of building a project team and, and doing that work. And so with that comes all of the trials and tribulations, all of the wonderful goodness that is projects. And, um, and you know, as a, as a project manager by training, that's, that's the place that I love to be in is working with teams. Um, so you go through this process and you bring together that group of people. Um, maybe they're a group of people that haven't done this before, or maybe they have done this before, but you've, you bring together that group of people, you cultivate a working environment. They start to build common knowledge. They start to build this way of working and this commonality and this understanding. You go through the big visual anchors. You go through all of those work methods. Um, maybe you're doing some customer demand capture. You know, you're bringing in new elements around agile software delivery, but you build that team and you build that culture and you build that new way of working. Um, and if this is early on in your transformation, it can often be that you almost end up with a bit of a cool kids club in the sense that you've got this pe group of people that are kind of burrowing away and doing something over here on the periphery and it's different to what the rest of the organization is doing, right? That's why we're doing this, we're trying to change. So you build this team and, and let's say that they, they finish that project now, um, in many organizations, what would happen at the end of that project is that those people will be dispersed because you've done a project and you now move on to the next thing. You might have built that cross-functional team and you brought them together for that piece of work, but it's not uncommon for those people at the end of that project to be dispersed back into their respective business units, um, you know, their, their, into the next project. It's not uncommon. Now, We'll talk about what happens if you don't do that a little bit later, but with, when when this happens, when you start to disperse people back, there's often really good reasons for doing that, right? There's this idea that they will take those ideas back to the regular um, space of working and they'll, they'll transfer that to some of their uh, colleagues and friends. Um, this idea that you'll be able to go and start up multiple new projects that all have these key people and that know how to work this way and that that, that idea will spread, right? This is... This is usually the logic and the thinking that goes into why you would break that team up and break them into separate projects after they've finished the piece that they're doing. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So what actually happens is that you've built this kind of vortex of this group of people that know how to work this way. You've built that, co I call it coalition of the willing, but you're bringing together that team and you've got them working in a new method. And then the idea goes, well, if I distribute those people out amongst my organization, they will go and build other small vortexes and they will draw people in as well and we'll, we'll build this cultural change momentum, right? What actually happens is that when you take a, a small group of people who have a tight new working culture and you put them into a larger pool of people who have the older working culture, it becomes a numbers game. And that small group of people find it really, really hard to be able to change the wider context. It's this idea of immersion and cultural change, that the broader, the bigger, the more voluminous culture is what's going to consume those smaller subcultures. And so you need to be really careful about this. So what actually happens is that instead of creating all of those little vortexes out in your organization, you put those individuals back into their respective business units or into their new projects. And instead of being able to take those work methods with them and spread them, what actually happens is that you marginalize and you isolate your change makers. And this is critical because if you don't have that vortex, what happens when those people go back to their, um, to their other places of work is they feel that level of frustration. 
um, that you have change fatigue set in, you'll have occupational burnout, all of these things that we're trying to avoid start to come into play because you've put an individual or a small group of people into a much bigger uh, work culture and they just simply don't have the mass and the momentum to be able to turn that culture around. You've broken them up, you've taken them away from their support network of that vortex of people that got it and instead of supporting them to make the change, what ends up happening is you start to see these conversations around, well maybe you need to be a leader and you need to step up and you need to lead this change or you know, what are you working on? Why can't you get the why can't you get the momentum? Why isn't why isn't stuff happening like it was in the old project? You hear these conversations coming through. That's an indication that you're marginalizing those change makers. And so particularly when you are in the process of change and the organization starts to realize on a on a more global scale that we're going through change, you get through a time window and what happens is often that organization will start to I, I liken it to sucking back into the core. And it's, um, you know, we talk about this concept of the rubber band, stretching the rubber band, and then at some point it snaps and it pings back and it hits you in the face. That's the other metaphor I like to use. But, but the organization, once it starts to realize that it's changing, will start to kind of suck in to that core of people who've always worked the way that they've worked. You get that familiarity and people go back to doing what they, what they want to do because it's comfortable. And all of a sudden, what you've done is you've broken up that key change team, distributed them into the organization, they are now sitting on the periphery of your organization. They don't get pulled back into the core because they're the weirdos and the, the strained ones that are out on the periphery and it's threatening and it's damaging to me and I don't want those people near me and I don't want those work methods near me. And so all of a sudden, you've isolated and you've marginalized your change makers and you wonder why they can't make change. And this doesn't just happen when you're in that traditional kind of project mentality, right? Some of you might be further down your journey in the sense that, um, you're starting to build stable teams and you're not breaking you're not breaking those teams apart at the end of a project. You're actually going and getting the next piece of work and feeding that into the team. So some of you might be at that stage with the stable teams, but it's still something that you need to be aware of. There is there is this momentum that you build when you when you start to put together that stable team. And there there is this this pushback, this systemic pushback that comes in from the rest of the organization going through this change process. And you, you can still find yourself in that, in that situation where even if you have a stable team, you, you decide to take a small group out or, or one person out and, and maybe go and have them help another business unit. It's that same process. You are marginalizing and isolating your change makers and then wondering why they can't be effective because you're not supporting them and you're not setting them up for that success. And so what's really critical is that we're aware of this through our, our projects and through our transformation programs. You must keep building that vortex. It's about drawing people into that coalition of the willing and making that bigger. It's not about splitting it apart and going and spreading it. It's that same behavior around spreading ourselves too thin. So I wanted to share that with you today. Super, super critical. I'm watching a lot of organizations go through this at the moment, particularly because we've had an environment where uh, with a global pandemic, we've had to make decisions quickly. We've had to put in place maybe um, some some projects or some um, or some change initiatives that uh, that had to happen in a hurry. There, were, there was that urgency behind them, uh, and so we've just grabbed from from the, those capable people in our organisation and said, "Hey, Tiger Team, go and do it. You're about to break those teams apart and go through exactly the same process of marginalising and isolating." And it's really, really critical that we keep on top of this, not only for the success of your change program and the change initiative and keeping that momentum and being able to help that team overcome this mountain of systemic inertia, but actually it's really critical for your individuals as well. Because what you'll notice is that if you don't do this and you do start to split people, if you do start to marginalize those change makers, you're going to find apathy you'll find increased six days, you'll, you get the occupational burnout, you get change fatigue, you get all of these things that make innovation and, and change really not sexy. So it's really, really critical that you're aware that it's going on, you're conscious that our natural tendency is to want to take what we've got and spread it, and you need to think about how am I actually building and improving that vortex, because that vortex that you've created, spinning that up, is what's going to give you the momentum and the power to actually overcome the systemic change that needs to happen, that, that weight of inertia that happens with just the way that we do things. If you split that vortex up, you're never going to build enough momentum to get over that hill. So 
that was what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I'm watching it happen in a number of organizations at the moment. So just be really aware of it. Be conscious of what you're doing with those teams and, and, and how you're working with those change makers. And uh, yeah, if you start to notice those conversations around what are you working on? Have you checked with everybody? You know, why aren't we moving as fast as we had? Just be conscious that part of what could be causing some of those conversations is marginalizing and isolating those change makers on the external, on the periphery of your organization. Uh, and then potentially you're in a situation where those people are not looking as effective as they did. Uh, you know, people start to question the value and all of a sudden you're in a very quick downhill spiral to losing those key people that you need to actually reinvent your organization. They're going to walk out the door because they're tired and exhausted and they can't see a pathway for themselves making change in the organization any longer. And they're going to walk out the door because somebody doesn't see their value because that core has pulled tightly together and these people now sit on the periphery and are no longer effective. So be really conscious of that. Um, wherever you are in the world today, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome day. And uh, I will see you again very soon. Thanks for your time.